Season 6 of Superior Angling TV is brought to you by RJ Sport and Cycle and the rest of our fine sponsors. Good morning and welcome to this episode of Superior Angling. We are here in beautiful Ontario on Lake Superior with a ton of ice around us and a ton of space to fish. I'm really looking forward to today. Just kind of the, you're up here in the, in the wilderness with so much area to fish and there's virtually no one in sight. So that's pretty, pretty special and pretty cool. Our goal and our game plan for today is to chase whitefish. Now whitefish are one of my favorite fish to go after in the winter time. Number one, they're delicious table fare. Number two, they put up an excellent, excellent fight. They're very aggressive and you can catch them all day long. You can notice a lot of our intros we do are in the complete dark. That's because for a lot of fish species in the winter time, you have to get out here in the dark. Not for whitefish. You can kind of get out here at daybreak because you're gonna experience a bite that generally lasts all day long. So that's another advantage of going after whitefish. Whitefish up here get very big, two, three, four, five pounds. So they put up a heck of a fight and are definitely one of my favorite fish to chase through the ice. We're also gonna see some bycatch, maybe a lake trout, maybe some herring. You never know what can swim by here, a steelhead. You just don't know. So a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. We're looking forward to today. Stick with us, it's gonna be a good one. We got our holes drilled there. Now let's get some uh, let's get some rods out. And what I like in a rod is again we're going to be fishing outside today. Um, I like to drill a bunch of holes for whitefish and kind of you know hole hop around. Um, and with that, again it's usually cold up here in Ontario. I like to wear mittens, and with that I like a rod with a full cork handle and a reel seat, and for me this 38 inch eye riser from St. Croix CCI is, I mean this is the most deadly tool in our arsenal. Perfect amount of backbone and sensitivity to work smaller spoons and handle two to five pound whitefish. So again, this is my rod of choice. Let's go over just a couple of baits that we're going to be using. We'll open our Eskimo 42 inch rod locker here that stores rods and you can also store all your tackle on the top. So in here for a Northland jigs, anything like a, a buckshot, coffin spoon, a macho minnow, you know, those are all baits that are going to uh, be productive and effective. Um, in terms of colors, anything gold, anything white, pink is usually a, a good color out here too. So um, we're just gonna kind of switch things up and uh, see what we have to offer. But any of these macho minnows, like these would be great. Generally, I don't need to tip these, um, depending on what kind of mood the whitefish are in. Sometimes you can uh, tip it with a, you know, a piece of bait or a plastic or something like that. We'll check on a Tory and see what he likes to do um, up here in Ontario waters. But generally, you don't need anything on these, on these spoons, but uh, some days that's, that's, the, that's the ticket. But anything white and bright colored, these macho minnows are, uh, are a great bait, along with the coffin spoons and buckshot spoons. So let's uh, get our electronics down there and start jigging away and hopefully see a whitefish before too long. So typically the way I like to fish these white fish is uh, pound the bottom, get that dirt stirred up and um, you know once you get that cloud of dirt going down there you can bring your spoon up off bottom you know one to two feet and those fish will typically rise up off bottom and eat. You can get these fish to chase up pretty well too some days. I mean we got one on bottom here right now just showing up but I mean it depends on what kind of mood they're in. They're either going to chase it or they're going to want it on bottom. So sometimes pounding bottom is the ticket and sometimes raising those fish up is the deal that you got to do. So it's just finding what the fish want. You'll see what kind of mood they're in on your Markham and go from there.
first fish of the day here. Had to switch it up here. We were doing uh, trying spoons this morning. We had lots of that one's dogging me. I really don't know what that is. We had a few fish come in. We we're running uh, spoons and they just didn't want to go at it, so I switched up to uh, number three puppet minnow. And I think I got a leak trout on here by what he's doing. This 38 inch Croy Custom is just a fun rod out here. I mean, you get lots of bycatch out here, lots of lake trout, lots of herring and that, and this is just the perfect rod. You can fight bigger fish with it, but the smaller fish are a lot of fun on it. For the first one of the day, lots oh, of big whitey. Look at that. He's got that puppet minnow just choked, so that tells us something they're wanting. A smelt profile bait and that's a nice one that's about a 20 22 incher probably and he's got every hook in him and i just got that bottom treble tipped with a piece of uh, shiner tail so that there's a pretty nice one that's a just above average i mean that's a 20 22 incher about three pounds tonight really nice eating fish and that's what we're looking for if we're going to have dinner we're going to keep a couple of those today and uh that was the bait just the blue and silver with the orange belly number three puppet minnow and a chunk of shiner nice one for the frying pan hopefully we'll get another one here oh yes <laughs> that is so cool man they hit that so hard that one came up and hit it i actually had slack line <laughs> when he came up when i mean there's a vapor trail on your mx7 there truly is with these whitefish when they see something and they key in on it, they're literally like a lake trout. Like that's the best way to describe it, is like a lake trout because they do not turn back and they are, they have one thing in mind and that is to absolutely destroy your bait. And for me, that's a nice first whitefish of the day. Beautiful, beautiful fish, right? Got two or three treble hooks in them. I mean, he hit that hard. And that's on a pink and white macho minnow with a little bit of a, a scent on there, just the tail of a, of a minnow. I had a couple of fish come in on me that didn't eat just the jig, so I put a little scent on there, put a little uh, tail of a shiner, and hey, that equates to a beautiful white fish on the ice. And to get that first fish, it feels so good because, you know, you can come out here and, and surely not catch anything some days, but when you land on a, a pot of whitefish, like uh, I think we're on here now, it is fun and you can truly have a remarkable day. That's a beautiful fish. We'll keep that one on the ice, but that's, these whitefish come off bottom. Again, they're generally, especially in this area that we're on right now, they're all gonna be bottom oriented. So get down there. There's a lot of sand on there. Get down there, pound the bottom, kick up some dirt, kick up some silt, raise your lure up and kind of hold it and get ready for impact. Because when a whitefish keys in on this bait, when they see it and they want to eat it, they are going to fly up. And like that one, I had slack line. He hit me so hard, he hit it and kept swimming up and I had slack line. So that's cool. That's a good start to the day. A couple of beautiful whitefish on the ice. I'm looking forward to what else is to come. That's cool. That's cool. Tori's gonna get the uh, the assist on this one because I had a macho minnow down there, and this fish would not eat. So Tori brought over his rod with the puppet minnow, and that equates to another nice whitefish. A little bit on the smaller side side of things here, but these puppet minnows are nice. You can notice that one is hooked on the back minnow, back hook. This, these puppet minnows have a front hook, a back hook, and then a treble hook below it. So, um, you know, the more hooks, the better. That one, kind of an unconventional hook job on the back, but that's what's nice about these puppet minnows is there's hooks everywhere on this bait. Another nice, nice white fish. We're gonna keep that one. But again, that's why a lot of times when I'm fishing and hole hopping, and Tori's been doing a better job at this today than I have, is having two rods next to you. Just two different actions, two different profiles. You know, we have our more of a horizontal bait, or more of a vertical bait in this macho minnow, and then more of like a, a vertical slash horizontal bait in this puppet minnow that can kind of dart around when you jig it. 
Um, you know, and these baits are great for pounding bottom, getting that fish to kind of regroup. Really imitates a smelt. So again, if they're not going to eat a spoon like this, have another rod close by because there, that totally paid off. We put down a puppet minnow and, uh, you know, we have a white fish on the ice. I played that fish for two, three minutes on the macho minnow and couldn't get him to go. So again, it's just a personality of a fish. Every fish is different. Um, you know, you just never know what they, what each individual fish wants. So it's good just to have kind of two rods next to you, two different profiles, two different actions, and uh, yeah, help you put more fish on the ice. That's a good fish. My goodness, that was wild, absolutely wild. That was incredible, man. Now I was working that fish for quite a while. He was right on bottom and I couldn't get him to really commit. Look at this, big head shakes. I just couldn't get him to commit so I just kept going back down to bottom and just pounding bottom, getting it to stir up and lifting it up a little bit. This feels like a really good fish. And then finally I got them to come up and that just made them mad, it just agitates them. And then you get them to chase up and you just know, you just see them come up on your graph, transition your eyes from your graph to your rod tip and just wait to feel that thunk and it's gonna be fish on. This feels like a really good one. Holy cow, man. Oh, I can't even get my hand around this thing. That's an absolute tank of a whitefish. Look at how big that is. That is huge. And look at, you can't even really see that macho minnow. That's how good he ate that bait. And what I mean is you agitate these fish and you drop it back down to bottom and kind of get them in their comfort zone, stir up some silt, raise it up, and it just turns these fish on and they race up and just clobber it. I mean, that's a macho minnow that's all the way down its, down its throat. And that is a big, big fish. Just the backs on these things is, you know, that's a three, three pound fish all day long. Absolutely huge. And why, again, whitefish are one of my favorite species of, the, of fish to chase through the ice. Let's get this guy unhooked and uh, get back down there. But that's an adrenaline rush, man. Just bam. If you've never tried whitefish, I would highly recommend it because there's not much that's, uh, that's more fun out here in the winter time. That's awesome. So what I like to do when I fish the pop-up minnow out here is I typically I'll pound bottom. I'll get right down under the mud, stir it up. Just, you know, pound bottom, three or four pops, get that sand stirred up. That's what's gonna draw these fish in. And then I'll typically, I'll bring it up about two feet off bottom and I'll just hop that bait around. When those fish come in, they're either gonna come in and they're just gonna hammer it or they're gonna want you to just barely shake it and they'll suck that in like it's a smelt. That's the main forge out here on these white fish. That's why they grow so big. They're just packed full of smelt. So that puppet minnow really excels some days out here. Like you'll outfish a spoon some days on that. You know, these fish just can't resist that smelt looking bait. So typically pound the bottom, stir it up, call those fish in and uh, work them up off bottom and get them to eat. The ticket is just watch or mark them and see what they want to do because some of them are in different moods.
another one. Had to make a little change on that one. I was running a buckshot. We couldn't get him to go. We had a few fish coming up and looking at it and they just didn't want to commit. So we switched over to a macho minnow and uh, that seemed to be the ticket. Sometimes these fish get a little bit negative and they don't want that rattle and that bucker, that macho minnow with a little kicker tail on it does it. Another nice fish. About 18 inches, maybe. It's that blue macho minnow there. Tip that with a piece of smelt or some impulse plastic and they just can't resist that. There's another one for dinner. Fun thing about these white fish is, is we're in the middle of the day here and they just seem to bite all day long. Doesn't matter. These fish are always active it seems and uh, they're real great to eat. So we're gonna throw that one on the ice and get down for another one. Oh, lots of other fish there. Ooh, that might be a lake trout. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> a fun thing about this area that we're fishing, uh, you don't know what you're gonna get out here. You know, I've had days where we've got lake trout, whitefish, herring, steelhead. I mean, it's just endless. Could be a big burbot. I mean, this fish has taken some drag. It's either a real big whitefish or a uh, lake trout. He wasn't too shy to eat either, so. Oh, yeah. huh. <laughs> I'll take that any day of the week by accident. Big trout just crushed that macho minnow. Little eighth ounce spoon, tipped with some smelt, barely hooked. But that just shows these fish, you know, they'll eat basically anything that looks like a smelt or he's got that, got that bait fish uh, profile to it. Nice fish, but get him back and Try to get some white fish. 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 There's a big school of them. I presume this isn't a white fish just by how big the school was. Like there was like 30 or 40 fish with this one. And it doesn't feel quite as heavy. So my guess is it's gonna be a herring. Yep, look at and that's a huge. I don't know if I've ever caught a herring this big. Look at how big that is. Okay, so this is a herring, also called a tulipy, also called a cisco. Same thing. Let's contrast that with a whitefish. Now, whitefish get a lot bigger than a cisco slash herring slash tulipy, uh, but they look very, very similar. You'll notice the mouths on the whitefish kind of angled down, whereas the mouths on the cisco are open more forward facing where the whitefish go down. Again, both of these are prime forage for the lake trout out here. Um, but again, these guys travel on a lot bigger schools than the whitefish do. Your whitefish, you know, two, three, four fish. These guys will be in schools of hundreds, thousands even. We get them around Duluth and you know, they're not this big, like this is huge. That is a massive, massive herring. That's fun to catch. And they were just hundreds, I don't know, maybe not hundreds, but there's at least 30 or 40 of them on my graph. <laughs> that is so cool. Just the diversity out here on Lake Superior is what I like. You just never know what you're going to catch from whitefish to herring to lake trout. Like, they're all out here, man, and they are so much fun. That's pretty cool, huh? Wow, that's special. Oh, yeah, that guy's doing it. Oh, yeah. That thing chomped, man. Dude. They don't have teeth, and he just whacked it, right? I can't believe that. Well, we just made a little change here. We were running that blue eight ounce macho minnow and I was doing really well when the sun was a little bit more out, but uh, they weren't touching it. They chase up and they just dropped back down. Grant's been using a UV pink macho minnow. Look at this one. And uh, look at that, just choked. Absolutely choked that. That was 30 seconds I changed that bait. That fish came in and absolutely hammered that. Like, look at how far down his mouth that is. That's an eight ounce UV pink macho minnow. That thing felt like a walleye or, you know, anything. You know, when you get that good whack, that fish hit that human business.
Dude, I have this fish at eight feet. Got him. Ugh. That is crazy. This fish literally hit me. Last time I grabbed him was at eight feet and I worked him up a little bit since then. So he probably ate at six or seven feet below the ice, chasing me from 30 feet. I mean, if there's a, if that doesn't mimic a lake trout, I don't know what does. They're just, they just fly so fast. I mean, they almost look, it almost looks like interference on your graph because that's how fast these marks move. I mean, you see something, you see a flash, get ready because it's probably one of these fish or a lake trout, a little bit smaller one here. We'll get, we'll get him back in the water and pay our dues to the lake. We'll take a couple home for dinner, but we'll release a few others. And that's all it, all it is, man. Just a, just a macho minnow, just a, a white, pink macho minnow with a little bit of a meat down there, a little bit of scent. Some days you don't need that, some days you do need it. I just like to have it on there just for, uh, for the confidence factor. But today these fish are, uh, are, eating pretty, are eating pretty good. That is so much fun. All right, well we are nearing the end of a fish filled day here on Lake Superior. Lake trout, whitefish, herring, like you can't ask for, for anything more. I mean, it's just been fast paced action pretty much all day long. Whitefish just provide so much, you know, fun and action and excitement through the ice. And uh, again, it's just truly why they're one of my favorite fish to chase. So it's getting cold, that sun's getting down. We have a little skidoo ride back to, uh, back to the truck here, but we have some delicious table fare. Again, if you take care of whitefish and really, you know, get home, fillet the meat, pat, you know, wash it underwater, pat it dry with the paper towel, put it in the fridge right away. It's, I almost like it more than trout. I mean, it's, it's truly absolutely delicious meat. So a baked whitefish sandwich in the, in the, in the oven is one of my favorite meals through the winter time. So I'm excited to uh, eat some leaves that we caught here today. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. We would like to thank you for watching this episode of Superior Angling TV. You can catch us every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. You can also join us on social media for weekly contests, behind the scenes photos, videos, and much more. Also, don't forget, check out superiorangling.com to shop our new apparel available now.